And thanks for joining us here on PM Express. And there's a conversation that today that uh, we're going to have with a man that has been out in the public limelight for quite a while. He is Kwesi Nyantich. He's a former GFA president. He's my guest tonight on PM Express. And he's moved from football to politics. It's a very interesting transition indeed. You know him. He is, he's done a lot in his life uh, with a fair bit of controversy surrounding him. Obviously, you know uh, Kwesi Nyantich, former GFA president. He has been there and done that. He's a lawyer too. He was GFA president from 2005 to 2018. It's one of the most prolific time in the life of this country when it comes to football. The Black Stars will be very specific because as you know already, as far as uh, his achievement is concerned, he did quite a bit in this particular area. Uh, in, it was in that period that we saw the Black Stars go to the World Cup. And that was a very important period. I remember in 2016 when he was the was a president, 2006, when he was a president, the first time we broke out that in the, in the World Cup. We went to the World Cup uh, for the pre, for pretty much the first time, and it was quite exciting. It was under his watch, and the legs claim uh, to that uh, particular glory at the time. It was a very important time for football. Anybody who has lived through that period remembers that. Now... That period that he was in charge, total of 13 years, six months. And in that period is when we went to that World Cup. And that was great for many, many people, including myself. But that wasn't the only one that he chalked. Not only 20, 2006, 2010, 2014. Again, under him, we saw that World Cup, uh, repeated World Cup representations. And then we go to under 20 again. We had that very important performance at that particular tournament, won the African first and only on the 20 World Cup went under him also. So he has a lot under, under his belt, but he had to resign. He resigned, why? Because there was number 12, which is a documentary that was produced by Anas or Remy Anas, and that exposed alleged corruption. is yet to be proven. There's a case currently before court, but he lost his job at the FIFA Council. He was first... Uh, banned for life because he was seen taking $65,000 according to the allegations in the announced documentary. He was then banned. He subsequently then reduced the, the, the ban uh, from life to 15 years. So he's seen a fair bit of controversy. Right? He claims that he was falsely accused. He still maintains his innocence. And then, of course, he dropped out of the public uh, limelight for quite a while, minding his own business. There's a case currently pending in court. We'll talk about that. We'll get an update there. But as you know, he is now in the race to replace the late John Kuma in Ejusu. And that there is a contest that is going to be one that you can bet will be keenly contested. There are nine individuals in this race, picked up forms, including Mr. Nyantiji himself. This is an election year after all. I'm interested in hearing his thoughts. That transition that we've seen from a football administrator to a politician, what does he really bring to the table? He's my guest tonight after this. And thank you very much uh, for joining us here on PM Express. It's a conversation I'm looking forward to. And PM Express is always brought to you by Syntex Tanks. It is strong, it is tough. Alamobites experience greatness in every moment. Ghana AIDS Commission and Pepsodent. Every smile matters every evening. I recommend to you Syntex Tanks because you're first to introduce a double layer tank and now you can have as many layers as you want. Syntex Tanks is the first to introduce a white inner layer tanks in Ghana and they introduce the customer specs order because they bring it bespoke. It, it has all manner of sizes, colors as well that you can choose from and you can also get a seven year warranty. Nobody else has that. Why don't you call them 0244-335-168 or shop online at syntexgh.com. Are you strong? Are you tough? Also, I always recommend to you the uh, Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. It has, it has pro-fluoride, micro-calcium ingredients, a sealing tiny and invisible holes in your teeth. This prevents the cavities, uh, keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy. It comes from different parts, 175G all the way down to... 12G sachet. So you can always get what you can afford at any time. 
don't just buy any toothpaste, buy Pepsodent because every smile matters. My guest is joining me tonight for a conversation. That is uh, Kwesi Nyantichi, who joins me now. And he is a man very busy. When you enter the political realm, you, began, you get very busy. And here you have him. Uh, hello, Mr. Nyantichi. Great to have you join us on PM Express. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope you're also fine. I am doing great. And I can imagine that you are in a Jusso as we speak. Yes, somewhere around a Jusso. <laughs> and that's, that's a man already campaigning. But campaigning, talking about that subject, that is something you're very used to. I mean, in politics, when you were climbing the ladder, you had to campaign to get voted for. It's not different, is it, from what you're currently doing? Yes. It's not different. I did a lot of this uh, activity even at the GFA. I contested three elections there, mm. and it took me round to every nook and cranny of this country. And so I think it's just a replica of the same experience that I went to, except that now the electorates are different, the messages are different, and the challenges are different. But the concept or principle of reaching out to the grassroots, the delegates, and trying to sell your message to them and convince them to select you ahead of other competitors is the same. I'm curious, why politics? From a man known as a proper football man, why politics? Evans, what is special about politics? Everything is political. Aristotle said that a man by nature it's political, even in your house. You do politics with your wife and children. When your wife cooks and is serving the food, she decides who should get the bigger uh, chunk of the, of the protein. It's, it's politics, isn't it? At the end of the day, you are looking at serving people, bringing happiness, and providing mm. a sense of community amongst the people. And that is politics. So it is just <laughs> important of what I was doing in football into the general society. Probably this time the stakes are higher. In football, it's a small community, but here you are looking at bigger, bigger economic, social, religious, cultural interests. So you're talking about politics in general, but you know you've entered the partisan political arena. Why the MPP? Well, it appears to me that uh, the principles and the conventions, the practices underpinning the formation and the evolution of the MPP uh, appears to uh, be coterminous with my personal convictions. And I, I thought that that was a good option for me. Okay, I mean, so what are these principles that you feel align with yours? Freedom, freedom, liberties, uh, development, uh, property, mm. uh, all the good things that you've seen in the 1992 constitution. <laughs> Align with your own principles and values. Exactly, exactly. But you've chosen this time when there is vacancy in a Jusu. Isn't let, that... me, let, me, let me provide some information here. You see, as a matter of fact, for a long time, I shied away from active partisan politics. Since 2012, I have received several representations from well-meaning citizens of Ejiso to become their member of parliament or to contest and become the member of parliament. I have on each occasion resisted the invitation on the grounds that I really didn't have the time. I was then busy doing football. So 2012, 2016, it happened. Mm. Uh, so around this time, what I did in a way to assuage the feelings of the people was to also give back to society what I thought I had gained from them. And so I instituted what was called the annual Easter games in that constituency. So football games were played in almost all the 45 towns mm. in that constituency. 
I provided jerseys, footballs, boots for young uh, uh, men in these communities. They played the knockout and the final was played in my, uh, my backyard in Kwaso. So I did that for a long time. And that to me was a way of giving back to society what they had invested in me or what they had given to me. And, and, and so the agitation or calls continued. So when Honorable John Kuma became the MP, considering his youthfulness, mm. we backed him and thought that he was going to be the MP for a long time. I had anticipated that he would do at least three terms because there was an unwritten convention in the constituency that the MP would do a minimum of three terms. So Honorable Akwesi of did three terms. Honorable Babna Usuadumi did three terms. And then uh, our brother John Kuma was also expected to do three terms. Unfortunately, uh, man proposes, as they say, and God disposes. He, he did his first term and nearing the completion, God uh, decided to call him to eternity. So the course intensified again. And this time I'm less busy. I said, let me give it a trial. This is just a way of halting my capabilities, my experiences and my competences in the arena of football administration to uh, mainstream politics. So this is not pure political opportunism when an opportunity just avails itself when you jump into it. Exactly. Exactly. It's possible that I will never ever have uh, gone into mainstream politics. I, I think that is just a calling, maybe God's uh, way of uh, getting me into politics. And I had to give it a lot of uh, sober consideration, consultations. I did one week there to consult. Uh, I spoke to many, many, many major stakeholders, including women, the youth, chiefs and elders, politicians, family members, et cetera, et cetera, before I came to the decision that uh, I should give it a trial. But you have been nursing this constituency from what you said. I mean, creating this uh, football, f you know, festivities around uh, in that constituency. That is nurturing the constituency. Exactly. So I was nurturing it with a different objective, not what, what, nurturing what, what, it. To... What was the objective? The, the objective was that I saw that as a, a social service, more or less, or a community service, uh, a responsibility, a personal responsibility to give back to them what they had also invested in me. I was not doing it in return for a reward or in return for a position or in return for some commendation from the people. My personal principles and belief uh, 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 doesn't allow me to do that. I, if I do good to somebody, I have a feeling that I'll get a reward in heaven. I don't expect a, return, a reward in return from the person whilst I'm alive. I mean, as we speak currently, Jujutsu has become a focus, obviously because we lost John Kuma in, in that part of, of the Ashanti, Ashanti region. I mean, when you were obviously spending time there and, and holding all these activities, you said you had no intention of running uh, as a member of parliament. But I'm curious, what are your ties to that constituency? Were you born there? Do you have any relative coming from there, Jusu? What, what are your ties to that constituency? My father. Hey, you've forgotten that my father comes from Kwaso. Okay. But, but you have a mother who comes from the Upper West Region, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Uh, and, and the constituency, beyond, of course, your work in giving them, you know, using your football links to help them with the football uh, festivities, etc., Beyond that, though, have you done anything in terms of real impact there? Well, that's, that there uh, was what happened when you're talking to a politician who's on the ground campaigning uh, whilst he's talking to me. People are still, uh, you, you, that is muted. It's muted. It's muted. If I'm, I'm muted, let's, let's, let's hear you. People, people are waiting for me to walk into a meeting and yeah, uh, big men around here. So if we can facilitate, uh, accelerate a bit, uh, hard, yeah. then I can end it. But but my my father is there. My have uh, my father was there. I have family members there. 
Um, apart from that, I have uh, family duties and responsibilities linked to many, many people there. I do a lot of Okay, the Zoom just froze there, but it is possible that a call had come through as we try to have this conversation with him. We'll go and talk to my colleague in the group. We lost you briefly because of the interruption. You were making a point about your connection to the, to the GISO. Yes, I'm saying that my father, my family members, a lot of people are there, and I have a lot of family things I do there which are not meant for public consumption. I see. You've picked up the forms, have you not? I have. You'll have to submit an end there will be vetting, will there not be? Yes, I think Friday or Saturday there will be vetting. Now, considering all the controversy that has erupted over you know, the last many years, aren't you concerned that it will be used against you in this campaign of yours? Application for it, why not? Controversies are not necessarily justified. Controversies may be motivated by considerations such as politics, such as uh, envy, such as uh, differences in opinion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It doesn't necessarily uh, uh, mean that they are justified. In the party's constitution, which will be used in vetting you, it says no member shall be entitled to apply for nomination as a party's parliamentary candidate for any constituency unless he or she, I, 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 is of good character. Is Mr. Nyantichi of good character? What is wrong with Mr. Nyantichi's character? I ask you that. I, I ask you. Been, I, I am a man of good character. I, have I been a judge or declared to be of bad character by any uh, co uh, court of competent jurisdiction in Ghana or any uh, committee or anything of that sort in Ghana? Have I? The body of which you were on this council, FIFA, they not only ban you for life, eventually, as you protested and challenged it, reduced it to 15 years, and they conclude conflict of interest, bribery and corruption, Article 22 of the Commission of, of FIFA, etc., were thrown at you. Many will point to that. But that, that is an arbitration, and it's not part of Ghana laws. Do you know that? Otherwise, then I cannot even... Uh, corruption in FIFA statute doesn't mean corruption in Ghana law. They are entirely different in meaning. They have a different meaning altogether to corruption. Yeah, but it's corruption nonetheless, is not? I'm saying that we are operating within the laws of Ghana. So you must confine yourself to the meaning of crime as defined in Ghana. Then if, if you find yourself in Egypt and you are described like that, somebody under Sharia law in that area, they, they will apply it accordingly. But that's it's better, for, it's better for you to live within the laws of Ghana. But doesn't that go to the question of character which appointed you to in the constitution though? Even if it is not the, the law in Ghana that was thrown at you by FIFA's own regulations. That is my opinion. I've just expressed it to you. If you want to hold a contrary opinion, you have the right to do that. But that is my opinion. Have you seen this used against you in your campaigning so far? No, no, nobody has done that because they, they agree with me. They don't agree with the position you are espousing. Okay, uh, well, we're struggling to hear you, if you don't mind uh, speaking up slightly. What do you say? We're struggling to hear you uh, because of the positioning of the... Can you hear me? It's very difficult for me. Mm. Can, you, can you hear me at all? Okay, we, we may have lost him there. Uh, there's a lot more to talk to him about. Uh, we'll cross over to the Ashanti region pretty shortly because, as you know, there's a flurry of activity there. There's, there's, there's so much to talk to him. If we had recently opened up about that, number 12, we have to talk about that. There is a case, you forget, that is still pending before the courts. That case is still running right now. And that's a case that the state has taken up against him in the back of the NAS, Arumaya NAS investigations. We'll hear that. He said a few things about NAS in the last uh, 48 hours that NAS has responded, categorically denied the allegations of bribery. And we'll, we'll put that to him too. We'll, we'll go to the Ashanti region pretty shortly. 
uh, we'll talk to Nalaya Ojima, who has been at the party's office in the Ashanti region there, where there was a long queue of aspirants all showing up with interest to contest the juicy seat. Really, what is it about the juicy seat? Some say it is as good as both feet in parliament if you win that particular primary. And that is why this contest is keen. You have a long line of people picking up the forms. We'll take you there pretty shortly after this. We have a focus on the Juicy Constituency tonight. We've just been having a conversation with one of the aspirants there uh, on the back of the demise of John Kuma. There's a tall list of individuals who all want to replace him in Parliament. One of them, the most prominent, of course, is Kwesi Nyantichi. For obvious reasons, because of the controversies that we know had surrounded him when he was the GFA president. Hopefully, we get him back. As you can see, when we're talking, he is in the constituency and already campaigning. Nanaya Ojima, my colleague, has been following this particular race closely. There's a report he filed that I want to show you first of the contest in Eji. So those who had queued to take the forms are really upbeat about their chances. The search for a Jusso parliamentary candidate for the NPP has become necessary following the demise of MP John Ampontiokuma. Though a date is yet to be set for the primary, the party is pacing up to elect its candidate in time. Some efforts were made to get some interested persons to rescind their decision to contest after posters of about 12 people went out. Dr. Evans Duya was the first person to pick his form at the party office at Ejoso. The lecturer at Akenten Apiamenka University in Kumase is believed to be from the food of the former MP and is bent on working in his legacy. But he said that Ejoso Dachim Renye, which means that the hope of Ejoso is now. And I'm saying that Ejoso Dachim in Tuaso, which means that the hope of Ejoso will continue it. So what I'm coming to do today is to be able to establish and sustain and be able to improve upon the good things that my own brother, Honorable Dr. Jonathan Tuan Kuma, began. Some women are proving strong in the race to replace the deceased MP. Presiding member for Ejusu Municipal Assembly, Helena Mensa, was flanked by some assembly members in the region as she picked her forms. Assembly member for Kwamo Electoral Area, George Kuntu Blankson speaks for her. Um, a lot of people went to Honorable Helena Mensa, knowing the good work she's doing as the presiding member for the Judicial Municipal Assembly. So upon careful consideration, he decided to come into the contest. So all assembly members in the municipal, together with the presiding members in the Ashanti region, we decided to join her today to come and pick forms. For the fourth time, Abana Pokria Amwa Boaite will make an attempt to lead the Ejoso NPP. Once upon a time, they said to me, Oh, who call you know? I feel no waba. And so, wabe, yeah, market too. Next time, you yeah, better amount. Amen. So, which means that they will do the same to the rest coming. Obia waba for no, one market to my home. Namuya, dear, and I'm going to my father. No, I'm brand new, dear. Second vice chairman of Ejoso constituency, Kwabana Boatin believes his candidature is best fit for the seat. He's a big man, and he has created a big space, which would need somebody with an equal competence to match up. In terms of his parliamentary contribution, he was top notch. You know, as a young lawyer, his advocacy, his represent effective representation of the people. That is what I am looking at. News of former president of GFE. Kwesinyan Techi's candidature has brought some energy into the race. His supporters picked the forms on his behalf. And then everybody knows Kwesi is a big man and a big brain, a unifier. And he has every, every quality to take the shoes off or the wear the shoes off uh, John Kuma. Portia Echampon and Kinsley Kakarimensa were among persons who picked nominations. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima, Ejoso.
And yeah, Juma, you've returned to the party's office today uh, to follow up on the latest. They have tomorrow, I believe, that's when the pick on the nominations will close. That's the fact, right? What's the, what's the total number now of individuals who have now picked up form since the filing opened? Okay, uh, we'll get him back. I mean, the last time we checked, I believe it was nine. And the party had attempted to try and convince some, some of the aspirants to drop out of the race. Thankfully, we can speak to the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP, Haruna Mohammed, who is joining us right now on the telephone lines. Uh, Haruna, thanks for your time here on PM Express. Uh, been a while. Let me ask you about Ejiso. We've heard already from the regional chairman that the field is just too crowded and you are attempting to try and negotiate with some of the aspirants to simply step aside or drop out so you have a, you know, a tighter field to, to run a, a primary that will not degenerate into acrimony. Can you tell me if that is something that a party is still pursuing? Um, Eva, good evening to your charity in the U.S. Um, you still buy elections. Um, the committee that is responsible for these particular elections have not reported officially to the National Party with respect to the allegations or rumors that has been peddled around. And for us as a democratic party, um, contest is open to everybody that is eligible to contest. Uh, as many as they are, party will go ahead and conduct a free and fair election for all of them. I don't believe that the committee will be doing any negotiation for anybody to stand down. These are things that uh, party stores would want to do in their own personal name, but not in the name of the party. So officially, the party is not negotiating anybody, but the party is moving ahead straight on to conduct elections for the AGSU by election. For us, we will to contest in the election come the date that the Electoral Commission will set a date for that. Mm. And as we now have seen, there's a lot of interest in the AGSU by election. Uh, the last count, we have nine people picking up forms, and my colleague Jima will join me pretty shortly with the very latest on this. Is the party excited by this or worried by it? Um, uh, both can go, but we, for the party, because we are mourning our brother, um, we cannot be very excited because we never wish to have uh, seen him live at this particular moment. Uh, however, it is a constitutional duty for us to build that particular vacancy. And as goes, uh, those who pick the forms, we we'll go ahead and let them go uh, after bed. Those who are let proceed will proceed in the team for April elections to come on. So I can't say the party is happy because we are still mourning our brother who, are, who is not yet buried. So it's a source of worry for all of us, but we have to go ahead and do the constitutional duty. Okay, so the race will go on, and as many as are interested can pick up the forms, even if you end up having 15 people. Yeah, I'll be very happy to even see Ivan go and pick a form. That would never happen. Uh, but, 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 I, but as we speak tonight, they, obviously the forms have, have been picked by individuals and the race is clear. At the beginning of, of this, when it was clear that parties were going to open nominations, many thought, also considering the history of the party when it came to you know, the sudden demise of incumbent members of parliament. We have the situation with Ayawaso West Wagon. We have the situation... Uh, with Man Kasim, where in both cases the, the spouses were allowed to take up the reins and go to the elections, and if they win, that's fine. This is not the same in Ejusu. Why? Um, Ivan, is the same because contest in MPP primaries is open and it is uh, demand driven. If the person is willing to contest, the person can go ahead and pick nomination. If you look at Ayawasu West Worker, Madame Lydia was interested and she picked a form. 
if you check Mankasim, the policewoman was interested. She picked a form. So if you go to uh, Kumo, the widow was not interested. She did. So that is how it goes. Because we live in a democracy, and the NDP, we are the beacon of democracy in this country. We have always allowed people to contest. So in this case, the woman is not interested to contest because we have not yet closed nominations. If she's interested, she still has after tomorrow to pick a form. So nobody has asked her not to do, but we have left the process into the hands of the democratic process so that anybody legible to contest, of which she's also legible, then she would go ahead and contest. Please stay with me. Let me bring Nana Yaojima, who has been covering this for us since this started. Nana, I was asking you earlier, before we lost you on Zoom, and I know you have joined me now on phone, What's the latest number of individuals who have picked up forms? By the close of today, 10 people have picked forms to contest in the upcoming elections of the NPP. Uh, the, the, the new additions that the people who came in today include Aaron Prince Duya, and he is a former assembly member in the constituency. Um, he used to be at his assembly member, and presently, he is within the NPP still as um, uh, 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 he holds a position at the um, local level, that's the branch level of the party in um, Ejusso constituency. Mamiya Ejapoma also today uh, walked into the party office in Ejusso to pick his form. And Kwame Amponsa, he was the last person today to pick his form at the NPP office. So far, 10 people. and. Tomorrow will be the final day for the um, picking of forms, and it's expected that more people will troop into the party office to pick their forms. Um, so far, four men picked their forms, and um, to many in the Ashanti region, it is very impressive. Helena Mensah, who is the presiding member for the Ejoso Municipal Assembly, is one of them. Abin Kukuya Amu Abuaite is making a fifth attempt at the seat. And also Portia Ampoma Abronye, who we understand is the wife of the Bono regional chairman of the NPP, Kwame Bafo Abronye. And finally, Mameya Japoma, who today picked her form. These are four women who have picked their forms to contest in this election. And uh, many believe that this race will be a keenly contested one. And if all these people should pass the vetting, it means that 10 people who go, or 10 names who appear on the ballot paper on um, when the data set for this election. Mm. Uh, and thankfully, uh, Kwesin Yantichi joins us now. Uh, he was on Zoom when we lost him there. He's joined us on phone. Mr. Yantichi, we're just talking about Ejusu for a second. Let's, let's focus there because that's where you are tonight. I, I just heard there that 10 people have picked up forms there, including yourself. That is, a, that is a vast field now of individuals, everybody wanting to go. There are some formidable people there, former constituency executives who are all picking up forms, including the, the wife we're now hearing of a, of a regional uh, chairman of the party in, in the Bono region, uh, Abronia. What makes you special? What, why, why do you believe that you will lead this particular field at the end of the day when the primaries are done? I don't know the, the other competitors. I only know myself, and I think that uh, due to my knowledge, experience, and uh, proven record in what I've done in life, particularly in sports and football, um, I, I, I stand tall. And if we look at the previous MP, the, the former MP, he did so much for the constituency. He has so many successes in many areas of the lives of, of, of the people. And uh, in football, I will consider him as Elano Messi. And I think that when Elano Messi gets injured in a match, he breaks his leg, and you need to substitute, you have to look for Ronaldo to come and play. You can't just go for any uh, football at all. And in this context, I am the Ronaldo. And I think that... Uh, because of what I have done uh, in life, that is probably why um, I've taken center stage or front page in, in, in the media space. Uh, and, and I'll be struggling to hear you, if you can speak up a bit into that. But you say you are the Ronaldo. 
I believe. I'm, I'm saying that in the, if it were a football match, the performance of the late MP puts him in the state of or the caliber of a Lionel Messi in the match. Mm. And I'm saying that if you have a player like Lionel Messi who has to be substituted in a football match, you just don't go in for any ordinary player to replace him. You must get another high-level player like Ronaldo to replace him or Mbappe or, or Hala. And I'm saying that in this contest, I am the Ronaldo who is fit and, and, and the best person to replace an injured Lionel Messi. Uh, but substantively, though, what, what do you bring to the table beyond looking at yourself as a Ronaldo, for example? Because it just... It's a place that needs real development. They need, people, they need people who can come in and bring change to their lives, substantively. I think I, I, that's what I just spoke about. You probably didn't appreciate it. I said that because of my achievement, my contact, the links I have, both locally and abroad, I, I will bring a lot to the table that will benefit the people of Ejesu. And that we should not just go for another MP. We have seen constituencies in which people have become MPs for two or three times without any substantial achievements to show for their stewardship. And so you have to look beyond just a mere or ordinary MP who will come and make up the numbers, go and sit in parliament and just visit the constituency on a weekly basis. You must look for somebody with some proven achievement, somebody with contact length locally and abroad, some level of influence, but he can draw development to the constituency. And I said that I am the person who can do that. Uh, and as you campaign in the constituency, what is your central message when you meet the delegates? And I know you've been meeting delegates. We saw that on even the Zoom. What is your core message to these delegates? My core message to my delegates is that I am the one who will bring development to the constituency. But, 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 but then come. again, isn't that a mistake? You are a member of parliament. Development is not your job. What, let, let, what did you say? Can we end it here? There are a lot of people coming to me. Uh, well, the, the, man is campaigning. the man is campaigning in the constituency. Yes. Then I Juma. Yes. Then I yes. Juma. So if we can do it tomorrow, I'll yeah. appreciate it. That's uh, Christine Yantichi there. He is on the ground there campaigning. There's more to ask him, obviously. I want to do this and, and talk about the other issues. He's obviously very busy on the ground. Uh, but Nana Yaojima is still with me uh, on, on the phone. Nana, so 10 people have picked up the nomination forms. Have you heard any whispers? We've just been speaking to the Deputy General Secretary of the party, who's telling us that, in essence, the wife of being the late John Kuma is allowed to pick forms. And the only reason why she has possibly not done so is because possibly she isn't interested yet. And that field is pretty open. Have you, have you heard any talk of her interest in this at all? Uh, so far, her name hasn't come up as one of the persons interested in replacing the late John Kuma. Um, so far, the people that I know who were so close to John Kuma have now started in camps. So it will be very um, interesting if I, I get to, to realize that the wife of eight MP um, also tomorrow shows up at the party office to pick her forms. Because if she should be interested, obviously by now you would have seen some of the people in John Kuma's camp now, um, you know, um, going in her direction. But even the people that I know who are so close to John Kuma, um, who followed him everywhere among the, uh, within the party, um, they announced they've started picking comes. Some are following um, Dr. Evans there, and others are also at the camp or in the camp of Helena Mensa. So it will be very surprising to me to get to know that John Kuma's wife is interested in the position. So far, there haven't been any talk of interest in this um, race. Mm. 
And I still have with me, I believe, the Deputy General Secretary. And, you know, Ejusu is a stronghold. It's a safe seat for the new patriotic party. And so you expect that this primary is going to be the only real context for anybody who stands on the ticket of the MPP. But in the by-election that will be held, we'll be watching the numbers. We're watching the numbers that we saw in 2020 elections and the numbers that we'll see after the by-elections. Because as many are predicting, this possibly could be one to watch, no matter how small the change is. A lot will be read into that. Because, again, if you want to see how a party is about to perform in the general elections, look at how they're performing in their strongholds. And this is one of those areas there. Can they maintain or better what they got in 2020? That is why that is so important. Nani Aljima, do you get a sense that the party in the in Ashanti region appreciate this particular issue as they go about selecting the, the next parliamentary candidate? Certainly. Um, having conversation with some leadership of the party in the Ashanti region, it looks like they would want to send a strong signal to other political parties in the country, especially the NDC, that they still have the, a tight hold of the Ashanti region. And it just so remains one of these areas that, that the NPP targets to pull a number or a lot of votes in the next election. Mind you, um, it will be a very, very difficult task for the NPP because John Kuma as an individual was very strong in Ejoso. Um, he had taken up a lot of um, philanthropy and he was doing most for the people of Ejoso. So he, he, he had a likable character as a member of parliament and a member of the new patriotic party. So if the NPP would want to make or um, add up to the number that they had in the previous election, it means that they, they would have to um, elect someone who has a um, similar likable character like John Kuma himself. But uh, notwithstanding, the NPP already is on the ground or monitor various media houses in the Ashanti region, already um, you know, are trying to talk to the people of Ajoso, appeal to their conscience to retain party, not just um, give um, them the victory, but the numbers that the NPP have always had in their Ajoso constituency be increased to a appreciable level where the, the, the new patriotic party can take advantage of that and also campaign in the Ashanti region when it gets to the general election. Mm. And this is a constituency where since uh, the 2008, we've always had more than 80% of votes in that particular constituency in the Shandri, one of the most consistently significant performers for the party in their biggest stronghold of the Shanti region. The last election, John Kuma himself managed some 82.8% .8 of the votes there. The key question is, can they hold on to this in this particular uh, by-election, or can the NDC eat into that a bit, and that will give them a bit of, uh, if they can even take 5% of that away from them, that will be a significant dent in the, in the NDC zone, confidence going into the elections, considering it is a stronghold. Uh, we lost uh, the question and teacher there, and pardon the interruption, there's so more we wanted to ask him, and we'll possibly do that to have a proper sit down with him when he returns from the campaigning on the back of the, of the primary there, whether he loses or wins, there's a few hard questions to ask him. We will do so when it gets into the studio for a conversation. Enjoy the rest of your evening as we look forward to this Ejusu by-election. It's going to be one to watch with 10 people as of tonight picking up forms to replace the late John Kumar.